Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the LP Zone, where everything, everything is all about loss prevention, organized retail crime, mall security, uniform, and plain clothes retail officers. We're glad that you are joining us on this edition as we broadcast live from our studios. And, of course, our show is always available on demand as well at iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and wherever else. You can get your music, your podcast. We're going to be there 24-7. On this edition today, we need to talk about the violence. Obviously, violence across the retail spectrum in small stores and large big box stores are just out of control. We're going to be talking in this edition about how we can take more control and reduce the violence. We're also going to be talking about ways that are being talked about right now by law enforcement, prosecutors, and government officials, ways of stopping the violence, and you're not going to like some of them. In fact, I'm disgusted with some of them. Some of the thoughts of how to reduce violence makes no sense whatsoever. I also want to talk about protecting yourself, protecting our store customers and our employees. And all of that includes assessment, situational awareness, stuff that we've all heard of before. Whether you work in loss prevention or uniform security, um, public safety, law enforcement, there are certain steps that we can take to avoid getting hurt. And I'm not going to suggest that we don't do our job because that would just be ridiculous but there are ways to do our job much much safer and so yeah we're going to be talking about that we're also going to be talking about some of the recent large cases that have been prosecuted involving organized retail theft gangs and the change of heart really in some areas Uh, as it pertains to DAs uh, prosecuting, shoplifting, and ORC, and the response of law enforcement. And we'll talk about that and so much more. We're also going to be talking about the breaking news in retail security um, over the last week or so. And we also have a couple of help wanted positions to announce and a whole lot more as we continue on through 2021 2021 almost over of course will 2022 be any better for the retail industry for the security staff who work that retail industry we're going to be addressing what the future looks like for retail security. And I got to be frank and honest, I've worked retail security LP. I've been a district manager, uh, a trainer, and I have never seen it as bad as it is today. I, I just, it's scary. And, you know, just like law enforcement officers, it's, it's difficult sometimes to come to work knowing that you can do little 
and that the violence is so great, but yet it is something that we love. It is a calling for many of us, and so we come knowing all the facts, all the dangers, and we do our job anyway. We talked about uh, in the last segment, the last uh, episode about investigations. Uh, Certain companies are expanding their investigations division, trying to preempt any store raids, um, using intelligence-driven information and analytics to be able to assess a possible uh, attack by looters, mobs, investigating social media, very much like law enforcement would do for drug investigations, gang investigation, and other investigations. And we talked about how to be able to not only implement an investigation unit, but how to pay for it and how to um, make it work for you and be an asset. If you missed that episode, it's definitely one that you want to listen to because we went through a number of ways that an investigator or an investigative unit would be both beneficial to the local store as well as to the chain, and also how it would protect employees and alert you ahead of time so that you're not just sitting, being a sitting duck and just hanging on and hoping that nothing happens. Using analytics and investigative skills and uh, monitoring the situation and working with other agencies, including Homeland Security and local law enforcement, you can preempt a strike. You can prevent. You can lock down your store when you know something is coming your way. Um, We're also going to talk today about something else that's being talked about in retail, and that is a safe room, a safe room. Something that some of the upper scale rich people have in their homes, some sometimes not even rich people. I know of people that are just moderately income people who are afraid of um, being burglarized or robbed or broken into while they are at home. And so they have constructed a safe room. It's uh, fireproof for numerous hours. I believe it's for four hours, some of them. Um, It has all communications, secure communications inside the safe room. So we'll talk about how that could be implemented for retail security and so much more on this edition of the Loss Prevention Zone. Remember, be part of the conversation. Go to our social media platforms, facebook.com forward slash private officer international, twitter.com forward slash private officer international. Look at our breaking news every single day. We put it out 365 days a year. www.privateofficerbreakingnews at blogspot.com. And you can also sign up at privateofficer.org for breaking news in your own mailbox. We're going to take a quick break when we come back here on the LP Zone. We have, we have a great deal of stuff to talk about and some pretty interesting topics. We'll be right back. Who knows what a child will grow up to be? It's one of the coolest things about kids the unknown. The potential. The chance to do or become whatever they can imagine. But what if something happens during childhood that stops them from reaching that potential? Did you know that preventable injuries are the number one killer of children in the United States? And around the world, one child dies from a preventable injury every 30 seconds. But the important thing to remember about preventable injuries is that they're preventable. We can do something to stop them. Things to make sure kids get the chance to be creative and play. 
the chance to take chances and explore. The chance to fall down and get back up. Help us give your kids and every kid the chance to grow up, reach their potential, and become whatever they can imagine. Learn how at safekids.org. I don't want to go blind from diabetes. I don't want to lose a foot or a leg. I don't want to have kidney failure, so I'm taking control. I'm controlling my diabetes. It's making a huge difference. I'm eating healthy and staying physically active. I'm taking my medicine. If I can do it, anyone can. Control your diabetes for life. Call 1-800-438-5383. Welcome back to the Loss Prevention Zone, LP Zone. Everything here is about retail security, loss prevention, organized retail crime, investigations pertaining to retail theft, uniform mall security, and anything that has to do with protecting property and lives in the retail environment. Before break, we kind of touched on for just a second safe rooms. And this is kind of a unique idea. We're very familiar with safe rooms in um, people's homes and, and some businesses, especially upscale, prominent um, dignitaries, um, wealthy people, those who are politicians often will have safe rooms in their home, but it's not something that you would think of or imagine needing in a retail environment. And yet, this is a subject that is being talked about across the country and looking at other countries that have uh, retail issues and violence issues we find that this is not unheard of, that it is uh, almost commonplace. You know, we have shelters, especially those of us who live in tornadic or hurricane areas in South U.S. or mid-Central U.S., any place that has violent weather, tornado outbreaks and hurricanes and severe thunderstorms creating a lot of havoc and damage, places Schools, businesses, and homes have those uh, shelters uh, oftentimes in place. In fact, if you lived in the south, someplace on the property, whether that's in the front yard or in the backyard, you would find a shelter for tornadoes, uh, Just sometimes just a, a little concrete enforced hole in the ground, other times a full-on uh, room built for safety and sometimes uh it's the basement of the home but something is um especially in the south and the midwest something is in place where people can run into should that bad stormy violent weather move in and that's what we're talking about here when we say safe room uh some retailers are looking at installing probably in their uh back room someplace maybe where they have they store their product maybe in the loading dock area they're looking at installing a safe room oftentimes when there's violence active shooters large mobs that are rushing in through the stores many of the employees and customers alike are pushed back toward the stock room or possibly uh the cash office or manager's office in the back that is uh secured that can be locked and now they're looking at constructing some type of safe room so that when mobs move in, when violence occurs, whether that's an active shooter or 
80 shoplifters storming the store at one time like they had a week or so ago in San Francisco. That was just crazy, wild, unheard of stuff. So, yes, I can see the value of a safe room. It is something that, like I said, it, it's new to the retail environment, but not something that would be so far-fetched and crazy that people would just overlook it. I can understand and, you know, see the value of having some place to lock down and secure yourself. We say over and over and over again, let the property go. I don't care if they take the whole store. Life over property any day, every day. So a safe room is wise. If they want to take the merchandise, so be it. Um, you know, why risk your security staff, your LP agents, your management staff, or your floor sales reps? Why risk their life or having them injured to protect property? Sure, as a, a longtime law enforcement officer and someone who's worked retail security, I love, love to catch the bad guy. I love to chase the bad guy. And there's nothing more gratifying than stopping the bad guy. Come hell or high water many times, most officers would agree that they're going to chase the person down. And when I entered loss prevention, we didn't have any restrictions. We could chase them off the property, down the block. It was a foolish thing now that I look back at it because of the safety issue. No two-way radio, no backup, no cell phone at that time. No one knows where you're at. You could be laying on the side of the road dead. You could be laying in the woods dead. No one would know until after it's just way too late. So from that aspect, that standpoint, yeah, it was it was foolish, but it was gratifying at the same time. But in this day and age, when many people are armed and many people are not alone, they may enter the store alone. They may look like they're alone. They may act like they're alone. They may have no contact with anyone. But oftentimes they're not alone. They have part of their crew out in the car. They have part of their crew in the store as a lookout. So it's very unsafe for one individual LP asset protection agent to go trying to stop, you know, a big time shoplifter, an organized retail criminal on their own, unarmed, and no no backup, no communication. And yeah, I, I've had you know, when working in retail, we've had signals. We, we, you know, as we're running out, we tell the desk clerk, hey, call code red or code blue or whatever. And that's supposed to bring all available store employees and management to back you up. Of course, they oftentimes didn't come, or if they did, it was only one or maybe two of those dependable Employees. Everybody else was like, hi, I didn't hear it. No, I was too busy with the customer. Yeah, there was no customer. They were just didn't want to get involved. So from a, a safety aspect, a safe room is not a big leap. It's not that far-fetched, and it's something that I'm sure that many retailers will continue exploring. We're going to keep you updated on this uh, idea and to see if anyone has implemented it or will be um, putting those safe rooms in their stores and shopping malls. I think it's a pretty good idea at this day and age, actually. We have a lot of retail news we want to bring you. We want to talk about a couple of other things. And, of course, we want to give you those job postings available right now. You're listening to a production of the Private Officer International Group, the LP Zone, and we'll be right back.
some children, America isn't the land of promise. It's a place where every day is a struggle. Because today in America, one in six children lives below the poverty line. For these children, living in poverty means going without. Going without medicine, going without food, going without a warm home, or even a roof over your head. And that's life for nearly 13 million children of all races all across America. Where will you draw the line and get involved? You can help these children and their families find a way out of poverty for good. And you can make a difference in more ways than you think. Will you help? Go to PovertyUSA.org today. Because one in six children in poverty is one too many. A message from the Catholic Campaign for Human Development. What am I doing lying in this casket? Oh, yeah. That's right. I'm dead. I got shot. I'm not supposed to be dead. I'm only 17. And now I can't see my 18th birthday because I'm a fatal victim of gun violence. My friends, my family, my own mother was devastated. Can't see her son anymore because of gun violence. And everyone's here at the funeral. But before they lay me the rest, there's just one last thing I have to do. How many more of us have to die from gun violence? Let's put a stop to this, because if we don't, the next time it could be your child lying in this casket. Brought to you by Man Up Inc. USA, a proud member of the gun violence awareness movement. Welcome back to the LP Zone, the Loss Prevention Zone, where everything is all about retail security. This show is a production of Private Officer International and Blue Ram Media. We have quite a few job listings uh, this week. Of course, Home Depot, Macy's. Walgreens and CVS are all hiring in multiple locations for LP Zone agents, loss prevention agents. There's a lot of loss prevention job openings across the country. We're seeing them everywhere looking at What's available right now is is pretty amazing. Actually, you have a a wide selection of opportunities. We actually have uh, more than 800 job listings for LP. Very uh, unique position available at the Under Armour headquarters in Maryland, a lead asset protection agent. A bachelor's degree at a minimum of five years of multi-store loss prevention or asset experience is required. You can go online to their website. Estimated start is between 50000 and 63.8. Ross, they're hiring several area loss prevention managers. You must have experience with loss prevention, shortage control, accident reduction, fraud investigation, fraud programs. You can view all of their job openings simply by going to their website. They also have a senior store protection specialist in a number of locations, including Alabama, Michigan, Ohio, Tennessee. Amazon is hiring loss prevention site leads at various locations. 
veterans encouraged to apply their job post says that you must have experience enhanced tracking, reporting on matrix, uh, key performance indicators, investigations, and working with managerial and hourly employees. We're also finding hotels and resorts now calling their security officers loss prevention, which is a uh, uh, kind of unusual instead of calling them security officers <clears throat> they are calling them loss prevention and right now we have a number of those listings across the country um, also we we have uh, home depot says that they are hiring 35,200 to 44,600 in numerous locations throughout uh, the U.S. 7-Eleven is looking for an asset protection specialist to work throughout the southeast, 47,200 to 59,800 per year. You must be able to work within the store frame, investigations, theft reduction, you can go to their website at 7-Eleven, Inc. and apply today. Walt Disney has positions open for loss prevention in Lake uh, Buena Vista, Florida. They have loss prevention agent part-time and full-time. Smart and final stores throughout the country are looking for loss prevention agents with a minimum of three years. Also looking for a district loss prevention manager that must have at least five years of retail loss prevention. The job post also says that it pays between 55400 to 70200 Candidates must have previous experience in the retail loss prevention asset protection area, must understand how to utilize point of sale, how to conduct internal investigations. The requirements include a bachelor's degree from an accredited college, a minimum of three years of retail security loss prevention management experience with a multi-unit responsibility, strong communication, proficiency in Excel, ability to meet deadlines, high attention to detail, and occasional travel. We have, like I said, many, many uh, openings right now across the country for loss prevention agents. This is your time to get into the field or to get yourself promoted if you've been an LP agent for five years plus. Now is the time for that promotion. Now is the time to move up to the next step. By the Armor USA, we've got what it takes to protect you, whether you're looking for protective clothing, body armor, Gloves, stab resistant vest, body armor USA. We're the place. We can help protect you. Body armor USA. Check them out online today. A couple of job boards that you might be interested in if you are looking for a new position or to expand your horizon in the loss prevention is, of course, Indeed. And there's also something called LP Jobs. We're coming right back here on the LP Zone. The Federal Aviation Administration wants you to fly your drone responsibly. Avoid flying your drone near other aircraft, especially near airports. Fly your drone below 400 feet. Always keep your drone in sight. If you see a safety issue involving drones, contact local law enforcement immediately. Fly smart. Fly safe. Have fun. When I was a gang leader, we probably did business together. Because when people like you buy knockoffs on the street, often the money goes to gangs. And gangs use this easy money for other activities. In other words, they're getting a lot of bang for their buck. Counterfeits hurt, but you have the power to stop them. Go to www.ncpc.org forward slash get real. A message from the National Crime Prevention Council and the Bureau of Justice Assistance, U.S. Department of Justice. Driving a car is basically like driving a weapon. My friend died because someone made a bad driving decision. 
My uncle died because someone didn't think before they got behind the wheel. You let down your parents and your loved ones. You could lose your friends. Parents don't like their kids hanging out with criminals. Drug driving is just as bad as drunk driving. Premier Training Academy in Charlotte, North Carolina is where you want to go if you need loss prevention training or security training, regulatory training for North Carolina and South Carolina. Call them at 704-806-4933. They're conveniently located at 5624 Executive Center Drive in Charlotte, North Carolina, Call our friend John today at Premier Training Academy. He can help you to be certified in the state of North Carolina and South Carolina, along with providing you some excellent training on self-defense, self-protection, weapons, first aid, CPR, and a whole lot more. Premier Training Academy. In the breaking news segment today, Retail security, a teenager has been charged with robbing multiple Chicago Magnificent Mile stores and tasing a security agent. The 16-year-old girl faces charges of robbery times two. The girl, whose name has not been released, has been arrested in the 600 block of North Michigan Avenue after a 6.30 p.m. incident where she assaulted a loss prevention agent security officer, and she is in custody on two counts of felony robbery and felony aggravated assault. At a time of increased retail violence, robberies, mob actions, there are less loss prevention agents and security personnel in the store today than there was just two years ago. According to a recent news post, authorities say that multiple stores have been found to have no security at all, even though they have been victims of robbery. In Fresno, California, three women there are under arrest after they stole more than $1,000 worth of items from the Alta Beauty Fashion Store in Fashion Fair Mall. Fresno woman says the two women walked into the store. Fresno police says the two women walked into the store, loaded up their bags with high-end cologne, but they weren't able to escape. Officers were able to get there rapidly and catch up with the woman as they tried to enter another store. Sandora Van Horn, 47, Keisha Battle, 30, and Tiffany Jackson all charged with felony theft. Authorities are also looking for three women in Detroit, Michigan, who robbed a store there. Authorities say the three assaulted the security agent on the way out of the store. Police have released a picture of the three women wanted, and you can go to our website at Private Officer Breaking News dot blogspot.com today to check out those photos. In California, police busting a retail theft ring that they say stole more than $200,000 worth of merchandise. Authorities working with law prevention were able to corral these suspects who stole property from CVS, Victoria's Secret, Target, Gap, TJX, LensCrafters, Nordstrom's, Walgreens, and Safeway. The California Highway Patrol Retail Investigation Unit led the investigation and the arrest. According to police, the brazen retail thefts uh, continue to spike. They are well organized by sophisticated criminal enterprises and they demand no less sophisticated response from law enforcement, according to Chris Koskin, chief of the 
California Highway Patrol Golden Gate Division. More arrests in that and other cases are to be expected. In New York, Connecticut, and New Jersey, the tri-state area has formed a retail ORC task force comprising of multiple police agencies. Connecticut had already formed a task force. They've been charged with combating the growing problem of organized robberies at brick and mortar retailers and Governor Ned Lamont and Attorney General William Tong said they will stop at nothing to prevent these ongoing onslaughts of robberies and violent attacks against retailers. Police in Birmingham, Alabama say two women and two men have been arrested for a smash and grab robbery occurring at Walmart and Target along Highway 280. Police have those four in custody. No names have been released as of yet. Police across the country have their hands full as more and more violent thefts and shopliftings are taking place. Loveland, Colorado police are currently searching for several suspects that walked out of a store with an estimated $2,600 in North Face branded coats. Authorities say that they scooped and ran. We see this now all across the country when it used to be just an occasional hit and run. Now it's happening every single day. Remember, you can check out our breaking news at privateofficerbreakingnews.blogspot.com every single day. We post a lot of retail security there along with other happenings in the security and law enforcement community. Authorities in Ohio say a UPS employee grabbed up a bunch of cell phones and stole them. Loss prevention and law enforcement say the UPS employee was investigated after a recurrence of thefts of phones from packages within the UPS facility. Investigators began surveilling the suspected employee and was able to nab him and charge him with stealing 50 phones. Security say that he had been tampering with packages for quite some time looking for those cell phones. Internal theft, of course, is the number one avenue of retail theft, and that includes in our distribution centers and in our warehouses. We see the same thing in all types of retail and in the grocery area as well. Two suspects in Columbus, Ohio, have been arrested for a robbery of $1,500 worth of Adidas merchandise from a Kohl's store. Police say they have both suspects in custody after the suspects, Tanisha Hall, 35, and the second suspect, Natavia Smith, took armloads of merchandise pushed past store employees, and fled the area. Police also in Stanton, Sutton, Virginia, have made several arrests and similar scoop, grab, and runs. They have two people in custody there. A security officer at the Walmart has been stabbed during a shoplifting Incident there, police say that Ron Babin was working security at the Campbell River Walmart when two shoplifters there tried to flee. One female shoplifter stabbed the security agent. He is recuperating currently at a hospital. A Dollar General is being sued because of employees slamming a suspected shoplifter to the ground, kneeling on top of him for more than 15 minutes, causing his death. Police were called upon arrival. The man was barely breathing. The lawsuit, which has been filed by the family, 
claims that it was excessive, assaulting, and also causing the death of the victim. In Hattiesburg, Mississippi, police there looking for a man on felony shoplifting William Willie Lampley, 46 of Hattiesburg, is suspected of stealing $3,400 worth of merchandise from a retailer. He fled. Police are on his tail and believe that they will have him in custody soon. Remember, go to our website, privateofficerbreakingnews.blogspot.com daily to see more breaking news on retail, uniform, security, public safety, law enforcement, and more. When we come back from this break, we'll be talking about safety of our employees and five steps, five steps that retailers, both with and without their own internal security, can take to protect their employees, themselves, their customers from these continual bombardments of armed and unarmed thieves that are ravaging our stores. You're listening to the LP Zone, a production of Private Officer International and Blue Ramp Media. Coming right back in just a moment. thousand people are waiting on an organ transplant at any given time in the U.S., and at least 80% of those are waiting for a kidney. For kidneys, it largely defaults to waiting time, uh, but for livers, hearts, and lungs, it's largely based on the degree of illness and how sick someone is, uh, and that uh, defines their priority on the waiting list. Dr. Charles Rosen, director of the Transplant Center at Mayo Clinic, says living donors can help save people waiting for a kidney or a liver, but those waiting for other organs unfortunately have to wait for a deceased donor. Dr. Rosen says if you're interested in saving another person's life with your organs after you die, it's important to sign up as a donor now while you're still alive to save your family from having to make a difficult decision at a difficult time. We've heard from donor families or potential donor families that decided not to donate uh, because it was such a stressful time in their lives that then three, six months later, they felt some remorse for not doing that. For the Mayo Clinic News Network, I'm Ian Roth. Rebound comes out to Hooley for the win. Hi, I'm Peter Hooley. My mom has always been my biggest fan. She cheered from the bleachers, from the living room, from her hospital bed, until one day she stopped cheering. My mom died of colon cancer at the age of 52. If she had been screened earlier, it could have saved her life. If you're over 50, get screened today so you can be cheering tomorrow. Welcome back to this edition of the LP Zone, Loss Prevention Zone, and we're talking today about the violence and the safety issues happening across the country in our retail stores, everything from our small boutique stores to pharmacies, big box, um, clubs, you know, it's just everywhere is prevalent in the small cities, the big cities, from the East Coast to the West Coast, and every place in between. We have been talking in the last couple of ep- episodes about investigations, have, you know, online investigations and really digging into the source of these gangs who are committing this violent retail theft is a key. There are really five keys to making your workplace safer 
It may not prevent the robberies, the violent takeover thefts completely, but it will definitely cut down on it and it will give you advance notice as to when something is coming your way. And I think you got to be informed. It's like anything else in life, whether it's protecting ourselves and our family or protecting our business, our customers, and our employees. So number one really is intelligence you gotta be online you gotta have that presence on social media and have a experienced investigator gathering that intel um, online on social media platforms places like TikTok where they show off their big ventures as they storm the stores we can make a quick difference by gathering this intel, getting copies of these videos and photos and working with local law enforcement. Another aspect of intelligence that we're just not really doing on a uh, everyday basis. We may do it occasionally if we're a target of one of those gangs, but we're not doing it regularly. And that is to exchange intelligence with other retailers other merchant uh, groups and associations and law enforcement. We've got to work together as one cohesive team in order to stop these violent takeover retail thefts. Online intelligence is primary, a primary source of intel. But gathering this information, these videos, these pictures so that we can match them up and share them with the retail community in our, our neighborhood really is the biggest start that we can do, the biggest thing. And make sure that we're getting everybody involved, every store, no matter what size or what group or who they're owned by, and looping in police and, and others in the ORC community. Number two is communications. We're not communicating. We're not communicating from our own store chains within our chains. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we don't. We're not getting out the information. We're not sharing the video, the, the pictures, the photos, the intel that we gather online. It's imperative, like I said, to communicate. Once we gather the intel, we need to not only share it with our own chain, the stores within our own brand, our company, but we need to really reach out to others across the region and share the intel and communicate with them about what happened at our store? Who was it that was involved? What did they look like? What intel did we gather? Did we get license plates, car descriptions, facial descriptions, anything that we have? And to reach out and communicate with other retailers, other merchant groups, law enforcement, and prosecutors. We're, we're going to have to be in this together, uh, a catchphrase that they've been using for the last couple of years. we got to be in it together make a difference, but it's true. We really do. And here's the other aspect. I don't think we're doing as good as we can, and that is communications within our own store, communicating with our employees. Hey, we need to hold store meetings weekly just about retail violence, just about ORC. I know that some Store chains do have weekly meetings about sales and floor plans and, you know, we didn't sell enough of these widgets last week and better customer service. How about retail violence? How about employee safety? How about protecting the customer? Let's get this communication going. We have a lot of rotating doors out there in retail and in service industry, especially People come and go. Employees come and go. As often as we change employees, we should make it part of their orientation. We're, we're not trying to scare them, but they they see the news. They watch these videos. They, they're they on Facebook and YouTube and, and, and TikTok and all these other platforms. They know what's happening, but we need to communicate with them. This is our safety issue. This is what we do. And Number three is right in the same frame, and that's protocols and safety plans. 
We got to have real, real protocols down solid if a team comes in. This is what we do. I know some stores just tell their employees to stand back. Don't get involved. Don't try to stop them. Just stand back. Well, guess what? Standing back, you're in the way. So as we spoke about earlier in in the radio program, some companies are considering uh, safe rooms. So in the meantime, where should they stand back? Do they go to the back of the store? Do they go to the side of the store? Do you want them to run out of the store? Where do you want them? What are the protocols? And anytime that our protocols change, which they are subject to change pretty regularly, as this is very fluent, we need to get that information out. And number two, or part B of this is, what about the safety plan? What is the safety plan? What if people come in with guns? Then what? What if people start shooting? And we have an active shooter plan. Do we have a quick exit strategy? Do we have a back door? Do we have a fire door? Where do they go once they get out of the store? Do they just start running wild up and down the street? Do we have a safe location for them outside of the store to go? We need to network with our neighbors in the area. When this type of event happens, is there a secondary location much more secure right next door or on the corner? Is there some other physical? I know of fire stations and police department that have substations right there in in your block and you're not going to them. You need to go wherever the, the place is gonna be safer. Working with police and prosecutors. Now, this really is a big one. I know we can talk all day long about how police don't have the time. In some cities, police are not even responding to shoplifting calls unless there's violence or weapons. And that is a big, big, big problem. I don't want to say I'm old, but back in my day, police had to respond to any call of shoplifting, regardless of the amount. Yes, it was a pain in the butt. I'm in law enforcement. I've been there both on the retail security loss prevention side as well as the responder. Yes, sometimes certain stores can be uh, a pain in the butt because they're calling about every $1, $5 theft, and they want that person arrested to show that they are, you know, trying to get the word out that they're not an easy target. But that causes a lot of problems for police. It takes them off the road for an hour, especially if an arrest is made and they have to physically transport that person rather than issue them a citation. And and that's a lot of things to consider. I understand that some areas no longer want to be involved in that type of theft call. So they have limits, anything over 500, anything over 1,000, anything with violence involved, which then turns that into a robbery. But we need, we really need to be working with our police, whether that be our substation, our precinct, or going down to HQ and sitting down with the police chief and saying, look now, I understand you're short staff. I understand that you don't want to come out for every penny any theft. But when we call and we tell you there's 30 people, when we call and we tell you that there's weapons involved, when we call and tell you people are being assaulted, which makes it a robbery, we need you to respond. We're taxpayers. This is a safety issue. We've got 20 or 30 people in the store that could not only be seriously injured, they could be killed. We need to work with our police, band together, and make some demands upon them that's reasonable. We're not asking them to come down for a 50-cent lollipop that some kids stole. We're asking them to respond to a violent act, a takeover robbery situation, a weapon situation, a place where people are being injured. And we need to work with our prosecutors, DAs, Commonwealth attorney, whatever it's called in your area, and make sure that they understand they need to be prosecuting these people. I can spend the rest of the day right now talking to you about all of the locations where prosecutors are turning down uh, shoplifting, even ORC cases and cases where violence was used. They have pled down those robbery cases and made them petty theft, which is totally ridiculous. 
five things that we can do immediately to help correct, make safer the violent takeover uh, gangs of thieves. Intelligence, very, very important. Intelligence that we gather online, intelligence that we share with other merchants, associations, police, and really across the chain, share that um, intel. We got to make it out there. We got to put it out there. And that includes pictures and videos that we gather. Communicate. We've got to communicate with our in-store staff. Really let them know what to do in these situations, where to go, and how to stay safe. We need to share that same communication with other groups and associations and retailers in our area. We've got to start getting protocols in place and making true safety plans. If we got five people, ten people armed coming into our store, swarming our store, go to the fire exits, go out the alley, and go to this XYZ place where you're going to be safe. We need to put together protocols and safety plans. We've got to have physical and electronic security. Yes, armed security does make a difference. No, unarmed security, uniform or not, does not make a difference. They don't care about those people. They're going to assault them and run them down first before they rob your store blind. We've got to have the best electronic physical uh, security. we got to have the, the best electronic security, the cameras. Most stores already do, but we got to increase the resolution on that electronic security video so we can really identify people. And we got to install cameras outside that can pick up those license plates, that can pick up the, the photos of those people involved, the vehicle description, and in some cases, we may even be able to get law enforcement to install LPRs in our uh, parking lots. LPRs are license plate readers, that w which will capture that license plate and quickly, instantly almost, search through the criminal databases to see if that vehicle is wanted. It will store that information and also the face. In some areas, facial recognition is also uh, available. And the other thing really in the electronic security area is facial recognition. Some large venues use facial recognition. And again, it's tied in with law enforcement databases that will identify that person. We need to use anything that's available that's at our disposal. Intelligence, communications, protocols, safety plans, physical security, electronic security, and working with law enforcement and prosecutors. That's what's going to make a difference. We really need to take these things much more seriously than some stores and some chains are. That's going to conclude this edition of the Law Prevention Zone. Remember, check us out. Monday's edition of the Private Officer Beat Radio. Always interesting uh, news, information, and subjects there. Be sure to join us. Become a member of Private Officer International, a law enforcement and private security association. Yes, we take law prevention. Yes, asset protection agents, private investigators, ORC agents, law enforcement, private security of all sorts, bail bonds, anything related to public safety and security, you can join. Go to our website at privateofficer.org. Until the next time, you all be safe. Be blessed, and we'll see you back here on the radio.